Right, this has got to be the video, the review that's taken me the longest time to put together. It's been two months with the Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and I've taken my time with it, okay? Two months, not because I had anything else going on, but because when you look at the spec sheet and what the phone has to offer, it's so easy to get bogged down, or rather carried away by what the phone can do. That's why I got the phone, took my time with it, let the hype die down, gave it time to evolve over the updates that came with it. And we're at a point where I feel like I can finally review this phone. And fun fact, I'm dropping the S21 Plus review alongside this. Link to that video right under that like button. The easiest place to start with reviewing this phone is gonna be from the design. I'm talking about the tapered edges covering this glass sandwich. You've got Gorilla Glass Victus, both front and back, and uh, there's something that's so common out here lately where people say matte back finish phones aren't fingerprint magnets. Now, there's some truth to that, okay? They're not necessarily fingerprint magnets, okay? They're not gonna catch fingerprints easily as gloss phones would, but in hand, when you look at it, like, there's just, especially for people with oily fingers, you can't miss smudging this thing. Yes, it's gonna smudge and it's easier to clean off, but I felt like I should just put it out there that it's not 100% smudge proof. Speaking of which, that glass bark doesn't scratch easy. Any marks on it from coins, pens, keys in the pockets, or even nails are just gonna rub off easy. One thing that I noted though is there is some wear and tear on the camera bump which is actually made of metal and if you look at my unit over here the sides have sort of started fading so you should keep that in mind as something you're gonna start experiencing as the phone ages and also it depends on how you use the phone how you abuse the phone okay just putting it out there that said, I really like the design of this phone. Yes, it's going to wobble on a flat desk due to that huge camera bump, but overall, it feels solid, well-built, and this design just has Samsung written all over it. Up next, let's talk about performance. Right, editor has here. Now, when I say performance, I'm talking about heat management, battery management, like battery longevity over performance and our processes multitasking how battery depletes as you use the phone okay throwing some gaming especially for those graphic intense games like cod mobile okay and in camera performance the type of chipset built into a phone does affect camera quality image processing audio processing and all that are uh, everything camera related back to the show now for the longest time anytime a samsung phone comes up in a conversation especially in reviews i get this a lot personally where i put out a review and in the comments there's gonna be at least 10 people or more asking if that's an exynos version or the snapdragon version in it i didn't get to experience or rather use the snapdragon 888 version long term for review purposes or side by side comparison but putting this side by side by last year's S20 Ultra that was running on the Exynos 990, I'd say Samsung have finally gotten on the right track. This here is miles, miles ahead of last year's S20 Ultra, which was running on the Exynos 990. I can feel the change, okay? I can finally say that the Exynos version of Samsung phones aren't far behind from the Snapdragon versions. By now, there's tons of tech reviewers out there that have put out side-by-side -side comparisons of either. I'd suggest you check those out after you finish this one. But so far, in my experience with this phone, Exynos is good. It's gonna take you through your day, no hiccups, no lags, no performance issues. And we're at a point where Snapdragon and Exynos are at par. 
Next, let's move on to the display of this here phone. I say this over and over again, and I'm gonna sound like a broken record right now. Samsung makes the best phone displays out there in the market. And this here is no short of it. If anything, it's better. It's the pinnacle of where they are. The brightness of this display is epic, okay? You have no problems using it outdoors in the sun when it's bright outside. And fun fact, it actually translates to how you perceive the images that you shoot on this phone. Every time I took a photo with this phone, there was just that extra sass that I got from what I had taken just because this phone has a really bright panel and the color accuracy of the phone is Epic. Actually, I'm not really liking my wallpaper. That is... <sighs> that, uh, you can't go wrong with this screen, man. The other aspect of this phone is gonna be the refresh rate. And now, this LTPO display here can vary its refresh rate from 10 hertz when the screen is doing nothing, when you're just staring at a stagnant page, example, reading a document, and all the way to 120 hertz which you'll feel when you're scrolling in and out of apps, through apps, multitasking, all that stuff. Even through gaming. Samsung this year have been more intentional with the camera design of the S21 Ultra compared to the hideous atrocity from the S20 Ultra. They've retained the 108 megapixel wide camera, but coupled it with the new different sensor. Another new headline making feature that we've seen come onto this year's display is that this here screen now supports the aspect. I had a lot of mixed feelings about this, okay? Here's the logic in my book. If you want an S Pen on your Samsung phone, why don't you just pick up a Note phone, okay? It's built for the S Pen. It's, it, it feels battery smooth with the S Pen. The S Pen was meant for that phone, even how it slots into the phone itself, charges the, is carried in there. Honestly speaking, why would you want to carry around a bulky case just to fit an S Pen in it? I, I don't get it. All the same, it's the, the S21 Ultra supports S Pen input. And uh, if you really understand the logic behind this, kindly let me know down in the comments below. Now that we've got all that out of the way, let's talk about the cameras. By the way, if you haven't kept up, I have already uploaded a full camera comparison video between the S21 Ultra and S21 Plus and the S20 Ultra from last year, so check it out. But for the means of this video itself here, yeah, I'll put it like this, the images shot on the S21 Ultra are just epic. Images are sharp, color accurate, clarity is nothing short of amazing, and it's quite feature packed. When living with this camera, I couldn't help but notice how Samsung have really put emphasis in the camera experience before camera features. Though I'm pretty sure they got on stage at the keynote and went on and on and on about computational photography and excellence of the S21 Ultra camera. I digress. The camera experience is smooth, easy to understand, and fun. One UI 3 has redone the whole layout of the camera up, bringing the features and options you need, or use the most, closer to you. Example, toggling video resolutions and aspect ratios can now be done at the top of a button instead of diving deep into the settings. Switching focal perspectives is even better without any lag and you don't feel any stutter switching from the telephoto to wide to the ultra wide. And autofocus is crispy thanks to that new laser autofocus feature. Speaking of which, Samsung has given us new features among the popular ones being director's view and added functionality to shoot 12 bit raw in pro mode. That said, there are some areas where the camera falls or misses, example, focus hunting that comes with such a large megapixel camera or how it has to digitally work out a focal perspective in between lenses, thus grading some photos, or how it shoots 8K video in the wrong frame rate, 24 FPS. All that said, Samsung didn't compromise on the quality here. And again, if you want the in-depth details of this camera, check out my full camera comparison video, the link in the description. I'm a big fan of the software features and layout. Example, how notifications are arranged from music to alert notifications to silent notifications. How the shortcut panel is now translucent and you can pin share apps that you use the most for quick and easy sharing. Two, and this might sound hella minor, but 
how you can search for an app, long tap on it, hit locate, and the phone shows you where that app is. I for one love that feature since I'm a guy who walks around with 200 plus apps on his phone. Pretty sweet. I also love the volume and sound panel. One might say it's copied, but I'm a big, big fan. So what are my overall thoughts of the S21 Ultra after two months of living with it? Here's the thing. If you've got the money and you are looking at this and other options, then go for it. Pull the trigger on it. It's a solid buy, solid phone. It's arguably the best Android phone out there in the market right now. You will be good to go with it. The other hindering factor might be that Samsung is now shipping your phone without a charge in the box. And you might look at that and think it's a ripoff. Even the excuses they're giving, sorry, not excuses, reasons they're giving might sound a bit dumb, lame, but that's the truth of the matter. While still on that whole topic of battery charging and not including a charging brick for you in the box, I use this to juice up the S21 Ultra. It's a OnePlus Nord charger that charges at 30 watts. Here's the thing. I notice that when I'm charging this here phone, when it's off or standby, just plug it in and go do whatever, it's going to charge up really quickly. But when I'm charging and using it at the same time, it's gonna take a long time to fill up. That's just something I thought that you should know, putting it up there. Add to the list of issues that might make you not buy this phone, you don't have micro SD card support anymore. I, do I feel it? Eh, eh. Not really because most of my stuff is stored in the cloud. I stream most of my music, most of my movies, so I don't really have a need to store stuff offline. Then again, if you look at how this phone is being advertised as being able to shoot 8K video, then look at how many apps you need to store on there. Maybe download some offline music or offline videos from YouTube. It's easy to fill this thing up pretty quick, especially if you're on the base variant, the 128 gig. Samsung has shopped the SD card from the S21 Ultra. Actually, the S21 lineup. Forget about it. That said, that's been it. This is Lord Hesion. Now that you've finished watching this, go over and watch my S21 Plus review, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, pretty soon.